museum. This actually is the entrance or the first wall, first gate uh, of a medieval castle. Not much left, but ecology uh, tells us. I better keep moving. Oh, hi there. Hmm. Finally. I nearly got lost in this uh, natural forest. Well, Brad, Brad from Pipes and Cacks, if you see that, uh, I could have needed your help. <laughs> You know, anyway, found my way. Mm. So some kind of natural forest here, uh, virgin forest or jungle, or whatever you may call that. Uh, they just leave the, the forest alone. Um, that's near Botswana, but I put a link down the bucket. Mm. Mm. So, smoking, smoking. Gas line. One of the classics, I think. Gas light is a classic, I think we can say that. I have no idea if camera gets this done because it's, I don't know, it's sunny, I can't see anything. But I like the picture anyway. So, uh, from gas light and the tin. I like the tin. So, oh, that's a jar, but normally comes in a tin. Mm. Before I talk about the time of gaslighting, I don't know what, what's crossing my mind on gaslighting. I'll tell you about the, the back here. Ah. I guess you already know the back here. So, well, I'll tell you anyway, just in case you, you, you haven't had one. Mm. Some gaslight, what do they say? First, I read the tin breath. Uh, so, you know, they say. A rich Latakia mixture pressed, pressed in uh, cakes on a misty moonless night. A long twisted cobblestone lanes illuminated only by the glow of ancient iron lanterns. You follow a scent as dark as the night itself. The exotic fragrance, hauntingly familiar, compelling. Irresistible. Open the tin, discover the mystery. It's a GL piece, and well, you know, as I pointed out in many videos, uh, GL piece never lets me down. Same thing here. So, well, it's it's really an English mixture. So it's really, if you don't really like the leather key out, that won't be something for you. But in every other case, fine tobacco. So, look at the tobacco. Come on, come on. Don't be shy. 
All right. So they say uh, that's supposed to be a flag. I don't really think so, because you see, that's that's not what I think of a flag. So it's more cake. So, but anyway, anyway, mm, cut it in very small slices and rub it down. You won't you won't face any problems. So the things I love about those uh, cakes or plugs is you you can give an own note to that. So you, you can just do something for yourself. So uh, I don't know, a brighter cut, a smaller cut. So whatever you want, you, know, you can do that for, for yourself. Well, there's a lot of wind coming up. I have to watch out for a camera. It's already shaking. All right, so what is in that? So there's Red Virginia. There's Oriental, Turkish Oriental. Uh, and a good amount of uh, Latakia. So that does the trick. So I recommend to, to uh, you just to sell her the tin for, I don't know, one or two or three years. It really gets better than, so um, don't get me wrong, it's, it's good from the tin, but it just, I think all those those English brands, so they, they really, uh, yeah, they, they really have something something different after one or two or three years in the tin. That's already does a good trick. So, well, you can store that, of course, for six years or twelve years. That will even be better. So, what up to the peak? But you don't have to. Well, one or two years, that's something. You know, gas light. Always when I smoke uh, the gas light, uh, something crosses my mind. So. And that's why I'm here. So that's a, a fountain here. Uh, that's called the uh, the Williams Fountain. There's a sign there over there. You can't see it from here. Well, uh, that's the Williams Fountain. So and all those well, those romantic fountains. They go back to the 19th century. They go back to the time of the gaslight. Um, and the forest, forest itself. I don't know. Reminds me of that too. But when I think of gaslight, and when I smoke this, this gaslight tobacco, there's something that always crosses my mind, and that's a story my grandfather told. So my grandfather was born in 1903. So that is what we historians uh, still call the 19th century, because we call that a long 19th century, because we think the, the 19th century, um, what, what it's made of, or the nature of the spirit of the 19th century, that just ended um, at the beginning of the First World War, so 1914. So my grandfather, if you want to say so, uh, was still born in that time. So my grandfather, he told a story about a gaslight. So he said his father, so they, his father, father, he built a new house, and he was, I don't know, he was I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, about the, the time scale, but anyway, so he wasn't sure to uh, which sort of light you want to go with. So in Germany, gas light, that was pretty common because all the gas lines, they have already been there. So this is because Germany in the, uh, in the second half of the 19th century uh, got very civilized. So, Industrial Revolution really uh, did a lot. And that was really a fast growing uh, nation, uh, population, and the technical things, and all, all those things. So, uh, um, there already gas was already in the houses because, I don't know, so for, for cooking and for everything. So, and so the father of my grandfather. Uh, but he heard about electricity and uh, about Edison's light bubble and well he was really into that to make the right decision. So he, he, he went to a lot of craftsmen, to electricians, uh, he did a lot of research on that, so read all the magazines, uh, all the good advices and so on. And in the end, he, he after some month, uh, he, he came back and he said, he said, well, I made my decision now. 
uh, we gonna go with, in the new house with gaslight uh, because everyone tells me uh, electricity uh, has no future. Uh, <laughs> so every time I smoke this tobacco, uh, I don't know, I remember that story and it gives me a smile. So, um, and you know, we, we could easily laugh about that. Um, so my grandfather was born in a time with horses. Everything was about horses. Nobody could ever imagine that uh, cars are all over the world and everything is done by cars and horses just for, for farm or whatever, uh, for sports or something. Nobody could imagine that. So my father, uh, my grandfather was born in 1903 and he died in his 80s. So uh, just think a moment. So uh, what he saw, not only two world wars, he was born with the German Emperor. <laughs> and think about what he ended up. So the, the world was completely different then, completely. So when my grandfather was born in the United States, that, that, that was just some kind of third class power or second class power in the world. So but that completely changed. When my grandfather died, um, the United States were, well, World power number one, so um, super power, and yeah, and just think about what, what happened politically. So the political system changed several times, the currency changed several times, but also regarding all those technical things. So as I said, my grandfather born in a time of horses. Yeah, and in the end, there were there were guys on the moon. Um, cars everywhere, um, electricity. So one of the reasons why those, those guys uh, told my, my, my grandfather's father, uh, don't go with electricity, was that there were some, some really serious uh, research uh, done by, 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 uh, yeah, by, by scientists, and they said um, there isn't enough copper in the whole world uh, just to put a copper line in every German household, uh, there wouldn't be enough copper in the whole world just for the German Empire. And um, yeah, that was that wasn't I don't know to say they they were bad or something like that. Or they were good scientists, but well, you know that's how the world is and how the world changes. And I hear the same arguments today, so people say, well, there isn't enough electricity to go by car with ele electricity. It would never be, be possible. Uh, they say, uh, you can't move a truck uh, with battery or something. Something like that is not possible at all. So, so yeah, sometimes I have to think about that. So, uh, well, Germany was some kind of late uh, with electricity because they've already been so modern with gaslight. So it was normal to have gaslight in, uh, in the household. So uh, my last apartment, uh, that was built 1861 or something like that. And there's still all the lines, uh, the old pipes for, for the gas. Mm, yeah, for the light. So you, you can switch on the line with gas. Uh, yeah. So people thought that we're good in that, just stick to that. So I think that's one of the main problems uh, that we, we're facing today. So some nations, some industries, they're so, I don't know, they're so good at something, they just want to stick to that. Well, that's just, that's just an opinion. So and that's just something I think from, I've learned from the history of, of technology. And that's always the same, that's nothing new. Uh, in Bronze Age, when the first iron axe came up, uh, those guys doing the bronze axes, they won't, won't accept that. They just tried to build better and better and better bronze axes. And in the end, they really did perfect bronze axes. Even the same shape of the iron axes, some kind of copies. But nevertheless, the moment the first iron axe came up, the bronze axe was dead. Just to walk in that. Uh, okay, guys, that's just my thought for today. I'll try to head out of the, this forest. Wish me luck with that.
Uh, <laughs> I hope you all are well. Mm. If you have the chance, get yourself some gas light. Not for your house, uh, just, just the tobacco, but done by GLPs. And perhaps you want one or two thoughts and think about the gas light itself and the time of gas light. An incredible time. People thought everything is possible. Everything. And they ended up in the First World War. That's the end of the 19th century then. Anyway, guys, uh, hope you all are well. Hope you have something good to teach you on. Take care and perhaps see you again.